Tonight, I'm going to be drinking uh, some of each of the current distilleries on Island. I have, starting at my right, your left, the Bunahaven. Uh, this is the northernmost distillery on Isla, followed just down the way with Coal Isla. Kilkeman, this is a, a good one. They're all great. The Bruaclati, that's great as well. And then further south, we've got the Balmore, Arvig, Lagavulin, which some people might know from Ron Swanson, Parks and Rec, uh, and Lafroy. These are all excellent scotches. And the reason that I prefer Isla the best so far um, is primarily due to the smoke. Now, not every distillery has a lot of smoke in their, their flavoring, but after trying um, Lafroy was my first one, followed by the Arbig, and then I had had Lagavulin at an event, and they were all delicious. And I said, you know what, I might as well try the rest of Isla. And so it's kind of been my my little hobby for a while now to um, to get and drink every distillery on Isla. Now obviously there's many years, many different um, embodiments in the scotch itself, but what really drew it for me was um, just that that really deep, peaty, smoky flavor. Um, and I've had other scotches. I have three other Speyside and uh, a couple of maybe Speyside. I don't know how you pronounce that exactly. It took me a while to figure out Isla, but it, it's still so far my favorite. Um, and as I built my little collection, I wanted to eventually be able to do this video um, trying all of the scotches in order and row to kind of for once and all decide which was the best in my opinion Isla whiskey now like I said there's many years there's many different um, ages on this table here you know you've got a 16 year and a 10 year and a 12 year uh, you have some more specific bottlings uh, that no one subjectively can decide um, from this video, I think, which would be the best one for them to try. And so I would recommend you try them all. But I figured I'd just go down the line, north to south, and see which one I like the best. So I am not in any way, shape, or form an expert taster. I don't have any tasting notes, a long finish. Um, I'll try to just say whatever comes to mind. I have two glasses here for literally no reason. Maybe one is for water. Um, but let's just get started. To start, I'm going to the northernmost, the Bunahaben 12 year. Um, yeah, I'll just read them off. Might take a while, but. Welcome to Isla, home of Bunahaben single malt scotch whiskey. Our distillery lies on the isolated northeastern tip of the Enchanting Isle, an idyllic place for distillation with a heritage dating back to 1881. Pronounced Bunahaben with a Ben, V E N. And a welcoming dram is fondly known for the wonderfully gentle taste it makes quite distinct from other Isla whiskeys. By not chill filtering our whiskey, we ensure you can appreciate the full depth of flavors, aromas, and characters that make Bunahaben a consistently award-winning single malt. So, let's see. This should be subtle smoke, malty sweetness, light fruit, lingering, and beauty, beautiful, rich, full-bodied experience. So let's try this one fresh. 
so the literal unboxing experience would require pulling that out and tearing off the foam top. As you can see, that hasn't been done, but I have been holding off. Some of these have a lot less in them than others. These are, like I said, my first three. I've kept these, these three bottles for over a year uh, as I have acquired other ones. But uh, yeah, they each have kind of a unique little taste. Again, this is the Bunahaven 12. Not a lot left in this bottle, but I'll save some for another day. I've enjoyed giving away scotch whenever someone comes over, because I like other people to experience the things that I enjoy, and maybe they'll enjoy them too. Um, but let's just give this a try. Definitely sweet, no, I'm not, sometimes you get the bitterness of alcohol and you know it's, it's gonna taste like alcohol. As soon as you swallow, it just comes back up and coats the back of your throat and you have that long finish some people look for there's not not a lot of smoke in that um, very smooth just delicious this is the kind of thing that I'd go back for two or three times which is why it's one of the ones I've had the least amount of time and it's pretty far down in the bottle I really enjoyed the Buna oven I don't even I don't even want to wash the, the taste out of my mouth, you know, it's just very good. So I'll let that sit there while I read the next one here. Got the uh, Cole Isla 12 year. I uh, actually picked this one up in the duty free shop coming back from part of Arta um, a while ago on a trip and it was Obviously on a trip, but it was one of those, I think this might have been number four in the acquisition. Uh, it's quite a while ago now. Each expression of Kul Isla, or Kul Isla, Kul, okay. Kul Isla reflects a special quality of the light at this remote Isla distillery, which sublime malt whiskeys have been made for over 160 years. Together, the picture a day is in its secret cove on the sound of Isla. The smoothness and fine balance of Cool Isla 12 year old suggest that the round shapes of the stills softly outline in a cloudy day's first glimpse of the sun. Fresh and fruity, it's a classic expression of the Kale Isla. Character first seen in 1846. Here are those spicy sea aromas and sweet, smoky, dry flavors, elegantly expressed with a clarity and the balance that comes from perfect maturation. So hopefully, aging something properly means that it's going to turn out well. And so with that in mind, Cole Isla see is also quite low in the bottle but sometimes you gotta wet the cork most of the single malt get a little dry after a while I don't know if any of these actually have a rubber rubber cork oh there's lots of I can smell it that smoke and this is a one and a half. Uh, yeah. One liter. Yeah, they have different sizes down there in the distillery. This was about a uh, $100 bottle, but we got a discount on it because we had purchased um, something else and they wanted us to come back for more. So it's just like, oh, spend more money. But there's just there's something to smelling one of these smoky 
single malts for the first time again, especially after having the Bunahaven sweet. I'll, I'll tell you that if you like, if you're not into the big smoke, the, the Bunahaven's a lot sweeter. And this has got, I mean, just look at the package. It's dark, dark skies and dark lands. And all that peat comes through. It's just drinking earth. You know, you get, there is no acidity to that. It's, warm and dark and earthy and above all that smoke on top of everything it's just wow I mean I'm gonna I'll definitely get them again I mean not one of these um, isn't on my list if I ever had to just order at a restaurant and I, I wasn't gonna try something else like I've I've tried scotch uh, from all over the world. I most recently had some, uh, uh, I can't even think of the name, but it was out of Taiwan, I think. And it was a, an award-winning scotch. Um, it was the Kilkoman, Kilkoman, probably. Established in 2005, so much newer pronounced Kilhoman, H-O, man, is one of the smallest distilleries in Scotland based on the farm on the rugged west coast of Isla. Kilhoman is the first distillery to be built on the island for 125 years. Uh, Kilhoman displays all the great, all that's great about the grassroots tradition of Scotch whiskey distilling and true is Isla's farm distillery from barley to bottle. Machir Bay, Machir Bay, located half a mile from the distillery, is one of the most beautiful beaches on Isla and is the name given to our core expression. It is a vatting of ex bourbon and sherry casks. The color is beach, the nose is lemon and citrus with sweet smoky aroma. The palate is vanilla and butterscotch with an intense sweet peaty aftertaste. Finish is signature, kill him in with a long lingering finish. So I should sweep and just have it hanging around for a while. And I just, I like the bottle, this like, medallion. Um, I have a tendency to collect the bottle, so I should really not do that because I'll never never stop collecting. Someone says, why do you always collect these empty bottles? I'm like, oh, they're all memories, you know, so why let them be empty? Why don't I just get a new bottle? So, and for anyone assuming that I'm doing shots here, these are pretty lightweight pours. But still, I, I don't want to take it all for myself. I want to be able to share with other people what's, what's enjoyable to me. And not everyone can handle scotch. Um, it's something that I don't do it as a, uh, as a way to be hip. I'm not doing it for anyone else. I'm doing it for me. I mean, I can slug down a six pack and be just fine. Um, or I could go on a, a journey, you know, and try something from somewhere else in the world that someone has, well, as they would say in the video, lovingly crafted from from the earth so let's see really sweet aroma very smooth um, almost no smoke whatsoever uh, I'm not getting any citrus, but butterscotch, vanilla and butterscotch. Yeah, it definitely makes me think of something creamy, 
and chocolatey. Lemon and citrus. Yeah, I'm not really getting that, but hey, I'm not, I'm no expert, so. But it's, it's really quite good. Um, I'm not going to complain. I mean, this is, this is, you know, honestly, I don't think a lot of people could say this, but my wife bought me most of these uh, for birthdays, for, you know, just being, being a good dude, she'd buy me one of these. Um, it's always, it's got a tight fit, it's got a little plastic sleeve inside of there that holds it. Uh, this one was recently shown on, I think it was... Kimmel, Fallon, I don't know. One of those guys had uh, Harrison Ford on there and they were showing him. I think it might have been Fallon, yeah. Had him. Uh, him. This is his favorite, I guess, or just the uh, Brooklady. His favorite distillery. I think, yeah, he actually has his face on some bottles on the limited selection of them. Harrison Ford, uh, Indiana Jones, Brew Clotty. Check it out. But, uh, let's see. We have a passionate belief in our barley. No mere commodity. It is the essential raw material of single malt whiskey. From this cereal, the most flavor complex spirit in the world is made. For us, it is the living expression of the land that gave birth to it. Of the terrier terroir, I can't say that word, T E R R O I R, that influenced, influences growth and of men who nurtured it. A uniquely fascinating exploration of the influence of, again, terrier <laughs> on single malt whiskey. This uber provenance takes us far from the usual territory occupied by commercial distilleries, but we believe it is important, once again, land and dram united. Um, they have a lot of print on this one, and for those of you wondering, uh, I don't really usually have a problem with reading, and it's not the alcohol talking, I'm not wearing my glasses because they throw an ungodly uh, glare into the camera, so I'm just a little nearsighted. Now, I do this video later, as it works out right now, I'm currently not recovering from LASIK, so that's good. Uh, in a couple of days, actually, I will be, so I'm not going to be drinking the next couple of days in order to uh, just try and improve my body and uh, be healthy and generally not be under any sort of influence, you know, as my eyes go through whatever trauma LASIK is, so... That's why I am not able to read as well. And this is again the 2009, distilled in 2009, bottled in 2015, eggs, aged six years in oak cask, uh, six years unpeated. I love single malt whiskey. Lube up the cork there, not a euphemism. And this one came at Christmas time. So, I've been enjoying it ever since. And this is now almost 4th of July. So, to independence, we can drink to that. Very smooth on the nose. twice. A little burn in that one. Um, I want to say 
that it has, it's not, it's not mature enough. It's, it's so, it's so light. Um, this particular one, uh, the 2009, again, I don't know what they'll, they have to offer. Otherwise it hasn't, I haven't actually had any other ones, but, um, with direct comparison, I'm not, it's not my favorite. I, I do like it uh, as a standalone. There's something about having not mixing these, um, to show up kind of be in their own experience, I guess. So this may be, I might not be doing them justice, but the first three held out great and they all had uh, their own strengths. Um, but so far, I mean, as you can tell by the level of the bottle there, it was, it's something I've enjoyed every time. So this, this I would, I would casually drink this just with some friends. It's not a very pricey bottle, so it's a good one to have. And uh, definitely worth the experience. Um, not bitter. It, it's unique. It's unique for what it is, I think. Um, and I don't, I don't know if that's the unpeatedness of it. I don't understand the process entirely. I watched, there's a couple of great videos that I'll link um, in the description, uh, this couple takes a tour, you know, they do the whole Isla, the actual Isla Island, and they were able to go to all these distilleries and try out some different stuff. And I really enjoyed it. And that's one of the main reasons why I actually got into the video, um, process. Hope I'm not going too long here. Um, I'm actually going to take a pause because I would hate to run out of film and drink the rest of these guys up so I'll be right back and I'm back here we go for the last four um, there's actually one other distillery on Isla right now that has yet to be uh, producing bottles to buy in my local store so for the time being this will be the definitive test. If you can take my word for it, it's all good stuff. Balmore, 12 year. The Balmore 12 is uh, home to one of the world's oldest Scotch maturation warehouses, the legendary number one vaults. Some of the world's most coveted single malts have been meticulously matured here. Steeped in more than 230 years of heritage, matured in the finest casts, and most perfectly balanced of these, Balmore 12 year embodies our signature style. Reflecting the essence of Balmore, thrashing waves, wind swept landscapes, and generations of tradition, our 12 year is both complex, perfectly balanced, with a subtle lemon and sweet heather honey compilation complement. Sorry. The trademark peat smoke of Balmore leading to delicious long and mellow finish. Open the door to a story of deeper character. So this is actually another of my Christmas presents. Just so happens to be in order. So let's finish off the water. I'm trying to hydrate so I don't overdo it. Again, these are all fairly little pores, but given my time frame here, it's coming up pretty much on 11.30 at night. Um, I tend to have more night energy nowadays anyways. There's, I think the way I described this the first time I had it is it, it's, it's like nothing while being delicious. It just is so smooth. No, no acidity, no, no acrid smoke, nothing. I mean, 
established in 1779. They know what they're doing. Perfectly balanced. So you're not going to do shots. You're not going to do, you know, first time chug a bottle. It is. You need to pair this with something else. And I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's a cigar. I don't know if it's a, a good meal, a great steak. Um, it's delicious on its own. It's, it's great. But the character doesn't stand out to me. It doesn't tell me that I have to have this if I'm going to have an experience. And that's kind of where I'm at with, with scotch in general, is I want to have an experience with it, you know, not to be pretentious or anything, but I want it to be something that's going to carry me to, you know, the island. I, I want to know what it's about when I get there. But, again, delicious. Found more 12, delicious. But does it stand out? We'll see. So, we get confused with my two glass system here in just a second. So, Arvig, I was about to pick up another bottle of this today over at the Costco. They've got a, Costco's by far the best spot to build. Uh, to buy and this was one of the first ones and I was I was looking at scotches in general which scotch should I buy for X amount of dollars for smoke you know I wanted the smokiness of the flavor and everything and it was it was between the Lafroy and the Arbeg to begin with because pricing wise it was gonna be ridiculous to spend that much on on scotch I just couldn't do it um, and then when I settled on this one, it was decent, so. The ultimate Isla Scotch, single malt Scotch whiskey, guaranteed 10 years old. Like, they should know. Shouldn't be a guarantee. You don't have to tell me unless you're off lying to other people or other people are lying about their Scotch. Of all of Isla's whiskey, it is Arbeg, which stands alone as the deepest and most balanced. So, they have a lot on their shoulders, I guess. Revered by connoisseurs as something extraordinary. Typically, most whiskeys are chill filtered and reduced to a strength of 40%. Arbeg 10 years old, however, is non-chill filtered and has a strength of 46% thus retaining maximum flavor at the same time, giving more body and added depth. On adding water, a little cloudiness may occur, which is perfectly natural and is not a matter for concern. So there, if it's supposed to be strong and you add water to it, I think you're distilling it somewhere. So I guess that doesn't really, I don't know about the cloudiness thing. I mean, Maybe we can do an experiment here. I have a little bit of water. I have, I have some. Let's see if there's two different flavors involved. And I, I do really enjoy the Arbeg. Um, golden, golden hue. I'm getting the smoke off the top there. hit you but then it's it's like you smell a barbecue going in the neighborhood somewhere you're like oh that smells great you know what are they making what are they cooking they got a uh, a whole pig on a on a spit out on the barbecue and you just think that that smoke and that meat and that you're like I want some of that and this is 
this is like that for me. I, I, I would just sip this and sit by an open flame or something. I think I was home. It's, it's just really good. I, I, I'm not even gonna dilute it with water. Not even a little bit. It's, I don't really think it's necessary. I mean, if I buy a bottle of my budget scotch, because you know, I can't go drinking a hundred dollar bottle of scotch a month, that's 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 a rich man's game, and I'm not a rich man. So, rich in life, rich in experiences whenever possible, but not rich in wallet. So, <laughs> for now, I I take them straight, and I enjoy them that way. And that's what I'll continue to do. But our big 10 years, standalone, great scotch. Give it, give it a try if you're interested. Um, I don't think you'll go wrong, but it is smoky. There's a lot of smoke in there. So, um, I just found this one one day and uh, in gift wrapping, and it was very welcome gift. I've enjoyed it many times and I've been able to share it with many people. And um, I remember specifically Parks and Rec, Ron Swanson, Lagavulin. That was his drink of choice. I've enjoyed a lot of his, uh, a lot of his comedy. So not Ron Swanson, but the actor who plays him. Um, many believe that this is one of the oldest distillery sites in Scotland. In 1816, local farmer and distillery John Johnston founded the first legal distillery here at Lagavulin. After the Gaelic Lagan Mahulian, the hollow where the mill is. Today, the four onion-shaped stills at Lagavulin are nearly tucked into a whitewashed jumble of buildings by the sea on Isla's rocky southern shore, guarded by an imposing ruin of Dunnyveg Castle. There's nothing hurried about the life on Isla, that dark, intense Lagavulin, which re receives the slowest distillation of any Isla malt, and spends 16 years in old oak casks before being bottled. Pungent and potent is a great Isla malt with rich peaty flavor, deep smoky flavors. There's an intense, long, ambrosial finish. Lagavulin is a majestic Isla destination on a journey around Scotland's six malt whiskey making regions. The other classic malts are Glenkinnick, Lowland, Dalwini Highland, Craganmore, Speyside, Talisker Island. Oban, Western Hunt. I don't, I don't know the association between them and Lagavulin. and I haven't dug that deep into it. I knew that they were on Isla, and so therefore they were a whiskey for me. And this is one of the first Isla whiskeys I actually had. Like I said, it was at a uh, event, and I've cherished my last few drinks of this. And whenever I've been able to share it. I have shared it sparingly. Um, some have gotten a heavier pour, others not so much. Um, it's, I think, without even drinking, and I'm going to say it's my favorite, but it still has to compare to one more. Um, I'm not worried about saving best for last, but. I mean, I've, give me Coal Isla, Kalaya, any day, Kilkeman, Balmore, these are all excellent. Um, but the Lagavulin, one, I know, I really enjoy it. And with that being said, getting down to the end here. I'm going to enjoy it at least a couple more times before I'm done with scotch. If that ever happens. The color. 
Color is fantastic. Bottle's great. History, age, smoke, smoothness. No acidity in the smell. Not overly smoky. There's hints of other things in there that don't... Nothing comes to mind. Um, but it's like walking in the forest and then uh, just turning just in time to see a rabbit running down a hole or something and like you're just chasing that flavor trying to put put words to it and it's it's an experience in a glass and that I mean I love it it's great but the greatness comes at a cost and that's dollar signs. I mean, I would love to, I'd love to go even deeper and try something of their exclusive lines. And I'd say exclusive in the sense of like just dollar amounts. Like, I don't know what, what's next, you know, what's the best one that they have. Someday I'd actually like to travel the island just, just to do the same tour that these other people did. And I don't know what I could take away from it, you know, it's, it's amazing what people can do, what people have done, generations of people that just come together for a common cause to continue to produce something. I mean, 16 years. So in fact, this is a 17 year or so, if it's, if it's accurate, or if it didn't sit on the shelf for two years before somebody bought it, cause it's so expensive. Um, but that means it's younger than me. And you think kids, you know, 18 year olds are not, not adults. Um, and something that young can be so, so delicious, you know, just sat there and got better, trained and think of it like a, like just uh, some master uh, Kung Fu artist, you know, delivering the, the fatal blow after meditating for years and that's just a a very verbose way to say it is some damn good scotch and so that being said the Froy is great I know it's great give it its fighting chance for me. I guess this is my fault for setting it up north to south, but it's just the way geographically it works out. And this is literally the very end of this bottle. I am not going to save any more after this. Why should I? I'm going to sit here and enjoy it. One neat thing with Lafroy is if you buy one of their bottles, um, you actually get one square foot of Isla. You become a landowner, an official landowner, if you fill it out online, um, gaining one actual square foot of Isla. I don't know what you're gonna do with that. Maybe you wanna go there, stand there, plant a flag. It is a legal claim. Uh, so that's something. So maybe you buy 10 bottles of Lafroy and you can put up a tent or something. They probably have limits to that, but uh, it's pretty awesome anyways. It's a really neat promotion. It's like buying a star, you know, who's going to prove it? They didn't sell the same star to 50 other people, International Star Registry. 
Um, Lafroy is an all malt Scotch whiskey from the remote island of Isla. And as we've discussed, that's where we are. In this western isles of Scotland, Lafroy is a Gaelic word and means the beautiful hollow by the broad bay. In the making of Lafroy, malted barley is dried over the peat fire. The smoke from the peat gives Lafroy its particularly rich flavor. Lafroy is best savored neat or with a little cool water. So, same thing on the container there. Again, I'm all neat all the time. Enjoy whatever true flavor comes out of that bottle. And as this is probably the last time I'll get to try Lefroy for quite a while, I am going to enjoy the heck out of it. So for anyone looking for the definitive 100% Yeah, it's just, it's smooth, it's neat, it's light on the smell, strong on the flavor, only a little bit of bite, but very, very chill. And there's some smoke in there, there's definitely some smoke in there, but it's not as strong as the Arbeg. As the smoothness goes, it doesn't compare to the Lagavulin. The Balmore is smoother still than the Lagavulin, but it doesn't have the same flavor. It doesn't have the same complexity to it. It's so, so smooth, it's almost nothing. The Bruaclati, you've got a really strong flavor, a little bit too much acidity, I would say an older bottle might be different, might be better, probably is. Um, the Kilkerman, it's liquid gold, it's smooth, it's it's smoke, it's flavor, it's it's peat. Um, the Coal Isla goes a long way in in complexity, it's darkness, it's it's earth, it's land, it, it doesn't, I would put this up against any of these and still choose Lagavulin, but this would probably be my close second. Um, Bunahaven, it's very sweet, very sweet in the scotch. If you're starting out and you aren't looking for the smoke, I would definitely try the Bunahaven first, if possible. If I had to choose a second um, for entry, I would go with the Balmore and then follow the Balmore up with the Kilkerman and then getting into the smoke, go to the Coal Isla and the Arbeg and the Lagavulin. But the Lafroy, you've got smoke fire on your tongue there. It has got a lot of flavor and a lot of smoke. And it's delicious. And I appreciate you guys going with me on this journey so far. Uh, I know this is a long video, but there's a lot to get through here. And I'm enjoying myself. I really am. And I will continue to try and enjoy myself and my, my journeys. Um, Right now, I'm basically building a different collection. And uh, I think that this is just one enjoyable event, one enjoyable taste after another. Um, and I'm gonna try and, try and keep that up. So 
thanks for everybody who's watched so far. And if you, if you like this video, maybe check out some of my other, uh, my other videos, the 25 shots of Christmas or the 25 beers of Christmas. I, I've enjoyed making those. Um, and then me and my brother, we do the, the whole two brothers off script. We've got a whole boatload of videos over there uh, where we just discuss anything and everything. So thanks for watching guys. Um, hit that thumbs up, give us a like, give us a subscribe and we'll, uh, we'll see you on the next video. Cheers. Winner.